Um, one thing I do want to suggest, uh, Kimberly, is that, um, and this is applicable for all of us, um, especially me, I am not a very graphical kind of visual guy, right? So I can make like a great looking presentation and it'll be boring as hell, right? So there's nothing wrong with hiring somebody from Fiverr or a graphic designer or something like that and say, hey, make this pretty, right? Make this modern looking, right? And then you're making phone calls and loving on families while they're making your presentation look pretty rather than you sitting behind the computer for a week doing something you don't like without the tools that the right person needs. And then you just get more frustrated, right? So understand, what, I'm not saying you're not good at it. I'm saying if you're not, or if you don't have all the tools, let somebody else do the job. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is that, you know, I can sit here and stare at this for a week. I know and you probably, can. And probably I already have. And I feel like, you know. that No more. We're done with yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit over it. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, I don't blame can you. I offer, can I offer a suggestion? Because I, I have the same problem. Um, and actually I did one in command with the templates and I picked the one that I thought was most me. And then I went through Ignite and really to start out, this is kind of what got me. We just need something like just something to help guide us through the meeting. And then maybe once we do it, we'll know more what we need. So I, I kind of took Melba's, I pared it down. 10 pages and um because i i can't see going into something with you know 40 pages they don't so, want to sit through a 40 page presentation and it has thinking to, to themselves it has to be, it has to wish, be they're thinking to themselves i wish this woman would just tell me how she's going to do this and get out of here i want to be with my family they don't want an 80 page presentation they really don't i promise you yeah, and think about what you would want on the other side. I was just on the other side of that table before I got my license. And I know I wouldn't have listened to all of that. And uh, I kind of wanted to get to the nitty gritty and what are you going to do for me and mm -hmm. sign up and done. All right. Um, let's, let's try to, I don't want to spend too much. I, I started this with like three people. So um, real quickly, Melissa, tell us what you want to learn today. Raymond, you're next. Bianca, you're next. Mahir, you're after that. And then we're starting. Uh, Raymond, go. Sorry. I, missed, um, I missed the first part of that question, Bill. Can you say that one more time? What would you like to learn today? Uh, well, um, the the art of the listing presentation. I think that was. Um, That's the point, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So definitely, I, I really want to catch like this, like the flow, more or less, I guess, to be specific. Yep. Just the flow of it. All right, perfect. Uh, that's a big part of what we're going to do today. Uh, Melissa, what would you like to learn today? Well, I'm completely new in this, so I'm just trying to take in as much information as possible. All right, beautiful. Bianca, what would you like to learn today? Um, basically, what everyone else said and just getting ideas um, on creating the presentation. All right, beautiful. And last but not least, Mahir, what would you like to hear today, sir? I would like to um, learn how to use this and make it in, in, uh, in the command without losing all the information. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, did, I did it. I did it on it. And then I saved my first page three times and I lost all of it each time. So, so something this is possible, but I'm doing something wrong. Um, I do not know the answer to that. So I will tell you that I would recommend the following groups in Facebook to follow. That one. And that one. And I would go on either of those groups and ask that exact question. Say, hey, this is what I'm finding. This is the problem. Who's solved this problem? I actually know the answer to that problem because I have the same problem. Okay. <laughs> and you have to press you have to press the add button for each page. You have to physically first add it. You can't just make changes to the template and then save it. You have to first add it to um, and then change it and then save it. There's like a little plus button in one of the corners. I can't remember where. Yeah, lower right hand corner. 
right, I might get you guys together for a little um, video display of that uh, at some point in the near future. Thanks for, for figuring that out. I know that's been a pain for a lot of people. Okay, I wanna walk you through a, a couple of ideas. I'm gonna share a lot of documents with you today. I'm gonna to put them all in the Roswell um, announcements page. So, um, uh, and, and then I'll share my screen a bunch today as well. So let's kind of talk about this from the, the 30,000 foot view, okay? Whenever somebody says, um, show me your listing presentation, in my opinion, what they're actually showing you is a pre-listing presentation, okay? So here's the way that, again, if you go ask a thousand realtors about what's their listing presentation process, you're most likely gonna, most likely gonna get a thousand different answers. So um, you wanna do something that complements your, your personality, that um, uh, you make certain that it appeals to people of different personality profiles, that you ask a lot of great questions, that you're super practiced and organized. But if like I include a piece of paper and you don't wanna include it, or you have something that I didn't have here, it doesn't mean you're wrong or I'm wrong. These are just some baseline ideas, okay? Now, there's a document called the listing proposal, okay? The listing proposal is um, what is essentially a pre-listing package, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen real fast and, and show you this, okay? Now, same thing with a listing presentation. The, the recipient of this, right, the seller, does not know that this presentation exists, right? So if you don't put a, a page in there, then it's not like the seller is going to say, hey, uh, page eight, what happened to page eight, right? They're just going to see what they see and that's that, okay? So don't get in the weeds about like, did I include every single page or any of this kind of thing, okay? This is basically a like, hey, check me out, read up on me a little bit prior to our meeting. And that way I don't have to sit with you the whole meeting telling you about how great I am and telling you every last detail about my marketing plan and instead, I can ask, just ask you a lot of good questions. And during the meeting, you'll do 90% of the talking and you'll walk out of that meeting thinking that I'm the greatest guy in the world. Do you know why? Because I just asked you a bunch of questions and you talk the whole time, okay? If, I, if during the meeting, you notice a meeting goes by and you're doing most of the talking, you're blowing it. Stop. You need to ask more questions and talk less, okay? Ask the question, let them talk. Ask the next question, let them talk. Okay, it's in my room, guys. Okay, so this is the, um, hang on just one second. Um, Kimberly, can I ask you to do me a huge favor? <laughs> you can handle it, I know you can. <laughs> you are now the co-host. So if I'm just blabbing away and you see that somebody is coming into the group, will you just let them in, please? It'll pop up and you just let them in. Okay. You got it. Okay. Hey, Bill, I thought you were doing the buyer's presentation only. You know, there was a, um, there was a scheduling mistake and I clarified that earlier in the week. Um, right. I, I, sorry if you didn't catch that. Today we're sorry. doing the listing presentation. Next Wednesday, we're doing the buyer presentation. Um, and then the following day, we are doing the uh, master, your, what is it? Um, hang on. Master contracts. So next Wednesday will be master your buyer presentation. Next Thursday will be master contracts, okay? Um, I apologize. Uh, I hope you get something out of this. And if you leave, that's totally fine too. No offense, okay? All right. So the listing proposal or listing presentation is basically just like, it's almost like a, um, it's like a bio book, if you will, right? It's something that you would share with the client after you're, you've set the appointment prior to the meeting, okay? So you can drop it off at their home. You can have a courier drop it off. You can send an Uber to drop it off. Um, you could email it if it was last minute, that kind of thing, okay? And I'm just going to very, very briefly go through this. I want to spend most of the time talking through the actual presentation itself, okay? Um, it's just a kind of an opening page. Again, it doesn't have to be exactly the same as this. Just giving you some ideas, right? Meet the team, right? Delivering a 10 plus experience. Now, I was this was shared in bold, so you can rip this completely off if you want, okay? 
how does somebody win with you or lose with you? Um, you know, a little bio about this particular agent. She's an agent out of Houston, I believe, or Dallas. Uh, Houston, and she has an expansion team in New Orleans. Okay. Um, some of her uh, uh, accolades and whatnot, right? What do you get in terms of communication, experience, marketing, pricing, staging, satisfaction? A little blurb about Keller Williams. Okay. 12 step marketing plan, professional photography, property brochures, assuming you do this stuff, open houses. Um, preparing your home for sale. What happens when you have an accepted offer? Right, closing 101. Uh, some information about pricing the home correctly and misconceptions with pricing. Pricing ahead of the market, making sure the price is right on day one. It's all nice, colorful graphics, not too much detail in there, right? Um, some more advice on pricing the property. Uh, what's next? A little checklist for uh, moving, uh, some testimonials. And that's it. Okay. Now I want you to. So this is called the listing proposal. It is now in the WhatsApp group the, called PC Roswell Announcements. And um, you can rip off the whole damn thing. Just make sure you change all of the New Orleans and Houston and Deche to your name. Okay. Bill. Uh, yes, ma'am. That's, you know, I, I mean, I look at this, but with us being new agents, Testimonials are um, almost next to impossible since we haven't really sold. And years of experience. Um, obviously, people would prefer to or think that you know they want to buy from someone who has years of experience, but none of us have it in real estate. So me personally, that's a page I would leave off. That's fine. And, but but you want to put something, so I mean. No, you want to put something because you saw this. If you hadn't seen this, you wouldn't know any better. So don't don't feel bad about leaving the dock. Is what I'm saying. And by the way, if you have referrals for or uh, testimonials from your other jobs, right, that are on LinkedIn or something like that, or just somebody that you've helped in a professional setting, it could be vague, right? It's like, hey, this is the type of character I have. This is the type of work I do as a professional right? It's not misleading. You know, it just, if somebody's had positive things to say about you, you could put a couple of blurbs here, okay. right? And if you've serviced somebody in a professional way and, you know, uh, in your past career and they haven't written a testimonial for you, don't be, you know, ask them, say, hey, I'm, I'm building my business. And um, I, you know, we've gotten an opportunity to work together a couple of times. And, you know, I was curious, would you be willing to write a couple of sentences about what it's like to work with me? That would mean the world to me, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be about selling homes, but if you if that makes you fuzzy, you know, just just leave it out. No big deal. No big deal. Okay, so let's put this uh, document aside for a second. Okay, so we're going to back up to the initial conversation. Okay, there is a document in the uh, Google Drive that is called um, Seller Intake Sheet. Okay, seller intake sheet. I will pull that up right now and post it in the um, in the chat. Okay, or in the um, what do you call it um, announcements page. Okay, this is a form uh, that I believe it doesn't have to be every single little question in the exact same order, but I it, it's written this way for a reason. Okay. In my opinion, you should have a stack of these on your workspace and a stack of the same one for buyer, okay? Now, when you're on the phone, sometimes you don't know if you're about to go into a, oh my gosh, this might be a seller. I wonder what questions I should ask. Them. Or, oh my gosh, we weren't talking about buying a home, but now we are, and I wanna make sure I ask the right questions, right? So you just walk, you just reach your hand over, you grab the seller intake sheet, and you got the questions right there in front of you, okay? So I'm just gonna read these questions for you real fast. Okay, um, we have established a appointment. Let's say we call the for sale by owner. We've asked them some for sale by owner questions, which we have scripts for that too. Okay, and we've set an appointment. The appointment's gonna be, so today's uh, one o'clock on Thursday. The appointment's gonna be Sunday, let's say. So now I know that I got enough time to courier that thing over there. So I'm probably gonna put it in a nice little box or something. I'm gonna make it special right? Because first of all, no other agent's doing this. And secondly, if they are, 
they're just probably popping in the email. So how can we take every little thing that we do, how can we plus it just a tiny bit so that it is surprising, so that it is delightful, so that it is you know, intriguing. Oh my gosh, this is such a nice little presentation this Kimberly Miller did. I, I guess that's probably how she'll treat our, the marketing of our home. I think we wanna hire that one. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So right after we book the appointment, we wanna say something to the effect of this. Before I come out, I need to get a little information from you so I can do my homework. Do you have a couple of minutes, right? Or maybe you, when you call to confirm the appointment, you ask these questions. If you're having a good conversation, I'd probably ask them. If the person's in a hurry, just say, hey, I, I'll call back you know, right before our appointment so that I can, um, uh, so that we can confirm, okay? And at that time, say, hey, I've got a couple of questions for you. Um, I need to get a little information from you so that I can do my homework. Do you have a couple of minutes? Great. When we're together, if everything looks good and the numbers work for you and you feel confident that I'm the right agent to sell your home, are you planning to hire me when we meet? Okay. When you see this, can you see how it has some of these words? Okay. I'm fooling myself. Can you click on that bill so it can follow along? Yeah. Yeah, that's a much better way than doing the way I was doing it, isn't it? <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay, you see how these words see sell your home right here? And the couple dots before that and the couple dots after that? That's called an embedded command. Right when you see these dots, you would say, um, I am the right agent to sell your home. Are you planning to? So there's a slight pause right before sell and a slight pause after home, okay? The idea there is you are directly speaking to their subconscious when you say sell your home. It is a command, sell your home. Not sell your home, that's an upswing. When we see embedded commands, we said we have a downswing. Sell your home, sell your home, okay? We, we move our voice down slightly, okay? Are you planning to hire me? I'm speaking directly to the subconscious. Hire me. They don't know what's happening. And it's in some way, this is this, some of these principles are from NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. It's kind of like, it, it has a lot to do with hypnosis, to be honest with you. Okay. This is the language of sales. Are you planning to hire me when we meet? Right? It's a soft close to some degree, right? They say, no, I'm interviewing six agents. Say, okay, great. Looking forward to it. Or they'll say, yeah, probably, right? I mean, isn't that helpful to know like what the chances are of you, like if they're like probably, then I can go in there and slam dunk the thing. If they're like, I'm interviewing six agents, then I'm gonna ask some additional questions in a second that'll help me clarify what I need to emphasize in my presentation and what they don't care about. You see what I'm saying? Y'all follow me? Okay. Um, are you planning to interview any other agents or am I the only one? I just want to know. I'm not here to fight them. Oh, you need to meet with me. That, the point is to get in front of them. Just ask the question. Whatever they say, just say, great, move on. Okay, when you sell this home, where are you moving to? I'm uh, moving to Chicago. Great, what's taking you to Chicago? Why are you making the move? Uh, we want to be closer to the grandkids. Wonderful, that's awesome. And how soon do you need to be there? Uh, we need to be there before the school year starts. Great. So if we were to sell this home in less than 30 days, would that pose a problem for you? No, that'd be great. Excellent. So what would happen if your home didn't sell? Right? Remember, sometimes we need to understand, well, all the time we need to understand their motivation so that um, we can bring it up if necessary. And the painful parts of this experience, if we need to make it more painful, we got to do that, okay? Our job is to identify the problem, make it slightly more painful, swoop in with a solution, and sign paperwork. Does that make sense? Y'all with me? Now, I went on Melba's thing this morning. All y'all had your cameras on. So what, what's going on here? I'm here with you, Bill. All right, all right. Um, what would home happen if your home didn't sell? Well, we gotta sell. We gotta be next to the grand grandparents. So, but the husband and wife are moving or working all day, and the grandkids got no place, nobody to watch them. So we gotta be there. Okay, great. 
that's a different level of motivation than, uh, we're just testing the market. So if it doesn't sell, no big deal. Like, don't you want to know how the seller's feeling? Y'all see how important that is? With me? Okay. What price are you thinking you'd like to list your home for realistically? You put in realistically. So they, if they're thinking 500, but they should be thinking 450, they're like, uh, 450. You see, it just met, it just, I don't want to say it's a trick, but it's, it's language, right? Um, and of course, I research the market every day. So obviously, we'll make sure we list your home at a price that will cause it to sell, correct? Right? So you're letting them know that you're the expert. You study this every day, and you're asking for buy-in on a joint decision, okay? So what do you see as your bottom dollar price, right? How much do you owe on the property? What is your interest rate? right? Have you thought about trying it for sale by owner? You say to yourself, why the hell are you asking me that, right? Well, I'm asking that because one of two things is going to happen. Either they're going to say, no way, I'm not selling this house by myself. Well, therefore, you're probably not going to get much of a commission objection, right? And if you do, you can remind them that says, hey, you know, you, you, you expressed to me how important it was to have a professional involved. This is the fee that the professional charges, right? But if they're like, yeah, we've, we're finally thinking about selling it. Um, you know, we were thinking about selling it ourselves. We just want to meet with an agent. Okay, so I need to beef up, beef up the value proposition so that it makes sense to them. So all these questions are designed to kind of test the waters a little bit, right? I need to know what tools to bring on the appointment. Does that make sense? Okay, tell me briefly about your home, briefly. I don't need to know when you bought the new knobs. Just give me, don't tell me how to make a watch. Just tell me what time it is, okay? Briefly, okay? How would you rate the condition of your home from a, on a scale of one to 10, 10 meaning brand new? Uh, it's an eight. What would it take to make it a 10? Oh, to make it a 10, we'd have to put in all new flooring, paint all the kids' bedrooms, um, clean all the gutters, uh, fix the hardscape out back, and take down the wallpaper in the two bathrooms. Okay, great. So now when they start getting objections that are exactly like that, then they'll understand why they're not getting a 10 price. Does that make sense? So it's a roundabout way of asking them what's wrong with your home. See what I'm saying? Besides that, is there anything else positive or negative that, negative that the buyers might notice? Well, the buyer might notice that there's a power tower in the back. They might notice that I'm on a busy intersection. They might notice that the detention pond is next door to me, right? Okay, they might notice that the driveway is really steep, whatever it may be, right? So you, you don't wanna do all your pricing strategies and research without knowing some of that stuff. Make sense? Okay, specifically, or I'm sorry, skipped a very important one. I'm going to email you some information for a meeting. Would you, would you mind taking a look at it before we meet? Or I'll be dropping some information off at your property uh, prior to our meeting. Would you take a couple of moments to review that? That is the pre-listing package. Make sense? That allows you to show your unique service prior to them even meeting you. And the second you walk in, you're the one that's blown them away so far. And none of the other agents, if you're in, even interviewing any other agents, are doing this, I promise you. It's, it would not be unheard of for them to say, Kimberly, that package, wow, that was super impressive. I'm thinking 350. Are you thinking 350? Yes, ma'am, I'm thinking 350. Okay, we're ready to sign. Like, literally, you may not even have to present to them. That is the presentation. That's your piece of leverage. Y'all get that? Okay, um, specifically, what are the main questions you have in choosing the right agent? Woo, is that a powerful question or what? Right, I want an agent that calls me every Friday afternoon and tells me what's going on with the home. I can do that. What if they say, I want an agent that calls me on the hour, every hour, every day until this thing sells? I say, well, um, I might have another agent for you to chat with. Because it ain't gonna be me. See what I'm saying? That's like that's another way of saying, um, can you just help me understand how crazy you are, please? 
I, I'm, I'm going to preparing to leave my family to hang out with you. And I need, I want a hint. Give me a hint. Are you crazy? Or are you not that crazy? I'm assuming the people who I can't see are smiling, right? Yes. I'm <laughs> smiling and laughing, Bill. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got to have some fun doing this stuff, right? Um, and last thing, will all the decision makers be there, right, for our appointment? Nothing's more annoying than presenting to the wife when the husband makes all the choices or the other way around. Oh my gosh, I only want to do this once, not twice or not three times. Let's just get all the decision makers there so we can present, okay? Make sense? Okay, so now we finalize the appointment. We have some data and we send off the package. Make sense? Okay, so I want you to visualize the power of the pre-listing package, okay? Now, we just did that on Thursday. We're not meeting until Sunday. So Friday and Saturday, hopefully, this particular seller is studying you, is seeing your nice, colorful, modern-looking, buttoned-up presentation. You're off with your family or courting other prospects. And then Sunday rolls around, they're blown away by how awesome your package was and how prepared you were with a series of very well-organized, well-ordered questions, right? And when you go to the doctor or the lawyer and they ask you a bunch of really well-organized questions, you're like, this guy kind of seems like he knows what he's doing, right? What if like, they didn't have any of that in place? You'd be like, gosh, they, he didn't even ask me if I sleep well or like what my diet was. Like, don't you think that was important? You see what I'm saying? So that's proof that you have a system. That is your system. I've heard what Melba says about systems. Y'all heard what Melba says about systems? You need systems. You need, you need, you need systems. That's my imitation of Melba. Okay. Make sense? Okay, so now we roll into the meeting. So now let's talk a little bit about what we bring on the, to the meeting. Okay. I want to bring the intake sheet with my answers. Okay. Um, there are some chart master slides, which I would encourage you to bring. Okay. Not the whole package. Please, not the whole package. They do not want to look at that crap. Okay. Um, these are the these are some of the ones I'll, I'll kind of real quickly go through these. These are the ones I printed out. Okay. Um, a shift. This says. 4Q consideration summary. I'm basically going through, I think it's page 33. Okay, I posted the chart master's thing in the group earlier today. Okay, so I think page 33 is the summary of the market. It kind of compares one year over 2020 fourth quarter versus 2019 fourth quarter. Okay, what's going on in the marketplace? So if, if these things pop up, you have some data to support what you're saying. Okay, the number of properties that are selling at or above list price. Okay, page 28. The months of supply for the various price ranges. It's a very strong seller's market. However, on the high end, it starts to start, it almost starts to look a little bit more like a buyer's market, like one and a half million and up, right? So you wanna be able to say to your, to your sellers, if necessary, you wanna help them understand what's going on in the marketplace, okay? What happens from a list price to sales price? That was page um, 64. Another one is the percentage of original list price received by sellers by price range. If they price it correctly versus if they do not price it correctly, meaning they have a price reduction or they do not have a price reduction. It's page 50. Same data with, um, Hang on. Okay, never mind. Um, and then if they start talk, this is a little bit more applicable for buyers, but just a kind of a summary of the distressed sales market, right? If you want to buy a home between 300 and 499 in Metro Atlanta right now, 0.3% is the sum of the foreclosures and short sales. So if you get a call from an, a buyer that's like, send me some foreclosures, um, you should probably double check to see if you're like living in 2009 again. Okay. There ain't no foreclosures out there. Bill? 0.3%. Yes, ma'am. 
okay, to get a little more finite. I mean, I understand you know, showing um, a perspective uh, seller um, the data for overall Atlanta, and, and doesn't that include like 40, is it 40? Not, yeah, 41, 41 uh, areas or 41 counties. But, uh, so I do not suggest bringing this out unless you are dealing with objections. So we'll get into where we present the, the data here in a second, but um, this is really just a summary of the market in general. It's not really to be used to price a home in a random neighborhood at a random time. But is there an area to find, like say, um, or say there's they're selling in an area, let's just say North, you know, North Georgia. Benton. Okay. And is there uh, stats that you can pull that are more specific to where that seller lives? Well, you you could just pull it from FMLS directly. So under, if you were looking at a particular there. school district or a particular zip code or a particular neighborhood or something like that, you could pull it directly from FMLS. This is just to help you and possibly your consumer understand how to what's going on in the marketplace, generally speaking. I would not use these documents to price a home. But if a buyer comes and says, hey, I'm thinking about offering 85% of list price, what do you think? I say, um, according to this, you're insane. Just kidding, right? But hey, that's just not realistic in our marketplace. Let me show you why, right? Okay. So now we walk in the door and we're, we're uh, presenting. Now, let me just, this thought just popped into my mind, okay? Um, do not dumb down your work if you're, if you're working with a friend or a family member. If anything, you wanna turn it up, okay? Nobody wants to feel like they're getting like the C plus version of, of you at work, okay? So dress the same, speak the same, be as responsive, if anything, turn it up a notch. Mm -hmm. Make sense? But like, don't come like in shorts and t-shirt because it's your buddy. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Don't not prepare because it's your buddy. Make sense? We hear you want to tell that story about you me and you were talking about the other day? About the Friday clock, Friday 530 call. Uh, is that what it was like when you um, you said you were caught unprepared? Uh, yes. yes. Well, so I I'm in the middle of doing remodeling, and I was dressed in a jeans and a t-shirt, and I had a call with Bill. After the call with Bill, I got a call that the gentleman, my client, wants to see a property at five thirty, and I either I. I would be late or if I was to go find clothes to for the client's attire kind of thing. And I think the the client would turn out to be closer to $2 million range when transaction gets done. So I was caught in jeans and t-shirt and I was not prepared. So from that day on, I would never step out of the house unless I'm in a business attire. So even if I'm going grocery shopping, I'm not going out <laughs> just to do that. Right, or at the very least, have it in your car pressed. That's the other part, yes. Right. We got to look the part, y'all. I ain't trying to debate whether I want to say this or not. Um, gosh, I, you got you to gotta look like you're working, man. You just feel different when, you, when you're in work clothes. I saw somebody wearing like a tank top or whatever, like a guy wearing a tank top on the Ignite thing. Like, come on, you gotta look like you're working, man. Not like you just rolled out of bed. Bill, I don't go to the mailbox without makeup. Seriously, seriously. <laughs> man, you're a public figure. I don't care if you like it or not. You're a public figure now. You signed up to be a realtor. Make sense? Absolutely. All right. Now, um, I have posted this. Did I post it here? Um, let me let me post it real fast. Okay. 
here's a document that I called the new listing presentation. I just put it up on the WhatsApp group and, I've, and we're sharing our screen here, okay? So um, again, it's just, a, it's just my way of doing it. Doesn't have, excuse me, it doesn't have to be your way, okay? Let me tell you something though. There are different personality profiles out there and they receive information differently. This is designed to appeal to all of them in little pieces during the, during the script. So if you find yourself saying, ooh, that, does, that sounds a little strange. If you take it out, you might be taking out something that is put in there specifically to appeal to a certain type of person. And if you take it out and it's that type of person, it may fall completely flat. Does that make sense? So these were not written by me. These were written by, you know, course writers. They know what they're doing. Okay. So hopefully it goes without saying, you better be on time. Not early. Okay. It's annoying if I have a one o'clock appointment with somebody and they show up at 1230. Okay. Be on time, maybe two or three minutes early, but don't be late. Okay. Make sense? So you show up at the door, shake hands firmly. If you COVID, whatever, got to do what you got to do. Um, be on time. Make sure you're looking sharp. Ask if you can come in, right? It's their home. They want you to take off your shoes, take them off, right? So they make the rules in their home. Make sense? Okay. We sit down at the table. Um, what, I would, what I would prefer to do is to say, right, basically, right as I get in, I'd like to say, hey, I'd like to take a moment. I really should have put this in here. I'm sorry. I'll, 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 I'll edit it, and it's in our um, Google Drive. Um, uh, the first thing I'd like to do, Mrs. Miller, is just take a quick walk around the home. I want to see the home as a buyer would see it, and I'll take some notes. And if I've got some questions about what I find or some recommendations, and we agree to work together, then I'll be happy to share those with you here um, a, a little bit later. So I wanna take a look around without the client, if at all possible. Because what happens if you're walking around the house with the seller, if they wanna show you every little thing they did. Hey, you know, little Johnny painted that bathroom when he was 12 and then we replaced these knobs. And what's really happening is like, cha-ching, 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 cha-ching. As they walk through the house, they think it's getting more expensive. So I don't need their, I can see what I need to see. I don't need the seller to point out all the money they've spent. I do not want that, okay? So I wanna see the home. I'm gonna take probably five minutes, if that, to walk around the home, make some notes, sit down at the table. Mr. and Mrs. Miller, Kimberly, I'm gonna act like I'm talking to you, okay? I have a great deal of respect for the investment of your time today. And there's a lot of, many real estate agents that you could be meeting with. And I just wanted to first share my gratitude with you for the opportunity to be here. In fact, we only have three goals for our meeting today, okay? The first is we're gonna review your motivation to sell this house now and agree on a price that will cause it to sell, okay? Two, we'll take a moment and I'll answer any questions that you have, okay? And three, this is in there for a reason, we will decide tonight, decide tonight, not six weeks from now, not next week, not six years from now, we'll decide tonight whether you want to work with me and I'll decide if I would like to take your listing, okay? Now, in a high eye, right? Somebody who really wants that personal connection with everybody, they're thinking to themselves, oh, why would you dare not take my listing, right? Well, I might not take your listing because in the next 30 minutes, you might prove to me that you're crazy, right? You also, I wouldn't say that, but I would say something, you know, to the effect of, you know, it doesn't happen all that uh, all that often. Um, for instance, you you may choose not to set a price that will cause your home to sell, um, or you may want me to pay for marketing that I know will not help your home to sell. Right. Well, I want you to, you know, put an ad in the AJC, you know, every week. What is what even is the AJC? I know what it is, right? But that ain't going, that's not going anywhere. Everything is online now. No paper ads are working, okay? So it doesn't happen very often, but you might want a, want to set a price that won't cause your home to sell, or you might want me to pay for marketing that I know won't help your home to sell. 
Doesn't happen often, but that's that's an example of why it may not work, right? Okay, fair enough. Yep, moving on. So I have three critical questions for you. Do you really want to sell your home? Okay, are you willing to price your home to sell? It, this is written a little bit back in a different market, but it says, or do you want it to sit on the market? Right? And number three is, do you want me to sell it for you? After all that, they may say, yeah, dinner's almost ready. I'm ready to, I'm ready to make a decision. Where do I sign? You might have a five minute listing appointment. See what I'm saying? Don't be surprised if that happens, okay? And by the way, if it happens, you don't need to say, well, can you just sit there? I've got an hour and a half long presentation I'd like to review with you. No, just get the paperwork signed. Make sense? Okay. Um, so uh, you received the pre-listing package. Did you have any, or the, the, probably don't call it a pre-listing package. You got the marketing package. Did you have any questions about that, right? Uh, one thing that's not in the um, pre-listing package that you could and maybe even should put in there is a copy of some of the disclosure statements, right? So if you walk in the door and they're like, oh, we, we went ahead and filled out these disclosure statements for you, you know you're onto something. You see what I'm saying? So you're, at, you're putting little clues in there to try to figure out, I'm testing the waters. I'm like, I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate this. Make sure, make sense? Hey, were there any concerns? Did you have any questions? Nope, everything's good. Okay, so I'm gonna use some, um, I'm kind of using this packet. This is the one that's in uh, command, okay? A couple of slides in here I, I like a lot, okay? Um, so your needs come first, it's all about you. So um, Mrs. Miller, I'd like for you to, you know, visualize your, your dream scenario of selling this home. Okay, what's the one thing that has to happen to make that dream scenario a reality? You answer the question, how can I make that happen for you, right? Why is that important to you, okay? If we could just add one more thing to make this process even better, what would that be? Why is that important to you, right? What do you need to see or hear to help you make your decision um, uh, on the agent that you will hire? <laughs> Said fire, hire, right? They say, hey, I just want somebody that's gonna answer the telephone and send me a text before all the showings. I can do that. You see what I'm saying? But if they're like, hey, I want to, I want an update within five minutes of the person leaving the home, and I want open houses every night of the week, and I want ads in the AJC, and I want to sell my four hundred thousand dollar home for five hundred. Oh, and by the way, my house is in, you know, Macon. They're like, ah, uh, no. Makes sense. Okay. Now is where you review the questions, the um, uh, pre-qualification questions, right? So. Uh, Mrs. Smith or Mrs. Uh, Miller, I had an opportunity to speak with, uh, let's say your, your husband um, uh, on Thursday and I asked him a few questions so I could better prepare for this evening, right? May I review those questions now to make sure I thoroughly understand your circumstances to sell your home and to make sure that we're on the same page, right? And I go through those same questions again and I ask him the exact same questions again. So we're moving to Chicago, right? When you have to be there. What happens if the home doesn't sell? Why is Chicago important to you? Would it be, you know, um, what's the deal with, uh, here, I actually have them here, right? Uh, you said you're moving to Chicago, correct? And you need to be there by what? You know, so what's important to you about Chicago? So uh, why is that important? Is there anything else you'd like to share um, that could make this a phenomenal experience for your family? So ultimately you're in Chicago by July and you're hanging out with your grandkids all day long. Ultimately, what will all that do for you, right? You're trying to get them to be, become a little emotional with you, right? Because when somebody gets emotional with you and you're there, it changes everything, okay? I mean, I have had so many, probably easily 50 agents in my life, um, I'll ask them questions about their business and their career and their goals and their potential and all that. 
and no one's ever asked them these questions before. Their spouse hasn't even asked them these questions before. And they will literally cry in front of you. And that's, that's how you're building the rapport, right? And if you can show them that you can solve their problem, they're on board. If you can't show them you can solve the problem, you got to do some more digging. Make sense? Okay. Um, you mentioned on a scale of one to 10 that your home ranked an eight and you know blah, 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 blah would make it a 10. Is that correct? Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Right? What happens if the home doesn't sell? Um, on a scale of one to 10, what is the level of commitment that you have to sell this home? Oh, we're a four. Why am I here again? Right? 